My name's Kirsty Wiebeck. I'm a Melbourne-based stand-up comedian. Uh, I did a one-week comedy workshop, um, which culminated in a five-minute spot at a um, like a bringer gig. So there ended up being like 150 people. We had to bring 10 people each. And uh, after that, I, did, I had no idea how to get into it. And um, I didn't know that open mics existed. I didn't know that Facebook groups existed um, for, for comedy, like absolutely nothing. So I wrote a one hour show and toured around with it and then just kept writing one hour shows. And like in hindsight, terrible, but people came. And eventually um, I entered uh, the Melbourne International Comedy Festival and then started doing rooms and the rest is history basically. I was working full time in the federal government um, in a portfolio that I choose not to disclose. Um, it was one of the really bad ones and yeah, definitely don't want to say what it was, but it rhymes with immigration. <laughs> oh, getting to travel around and meet new people and make people laugh, hands down. Um, yeah, I, at the moment, I've been travelling nearly every week um, for, for the majority of the year. So, uh, while it uh, is a little bit tiring and uh, I would like to go home for a little while, uh, yeah, it's pretty rad being able to see the whole country. Like, I just got to do a tour for two and a half weeks through regional WA. Like, I saw parts of the country that I probably would never see if it weren't for doing comedy. So, yeah, I reckon that. Yeah, look, I've had a I've had a really lucky run so far. Um, the first thing that pops into head is a super recent memory. Um, it's it's actually from last night when I was doing a headliner set and a fruit fly flew up into my sinuses at the start of the show. So um, I did a thirty minute set. Uh, wanted to go for longer, but in the end couldn't because it was fluttering around in my sinuses. And, like, it was fine. I, I wouldn't call it a bombing, but, like, personally, like, my timing was all out of whack and I felt terrible on stage and I couldn't focus on what I was doing and I couldn't remember what jokes I'd done. And it was just, like, 30 minutes of the hardest work ever. Uh, wasn't enjoyable at all. Apparently the audience didn't really notice, but it felt pretty awful for me. <laughs> oh, man, that's such a tough one. I had... um. I've had such a great year, uh, like it, even just thinking about this year alone, like never mind any any of the previous ones. Um, this year I got to do the closing night gala at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, which was like always a big goal of mine to be able to do. So like that was a huge highlight. Um, I also got to do the upfront gala during the comedy festival, which was also um, a major goal of mine. Um, Tommy Little did an extra show at Hamer Hall in Melbourne and I'd always wanted to play on the Hamer Hall stage and he got me to be his opening act. Joel Creasy took me to Sydney and Perth this year to be his opening act for his tour. So, R Melbourne International Comedy Festival Roadshow, like through regional WA, like that was incredible as well. Like, t there's too many to name basically. I've just had, I've had a ripper year. <laughs> uh, I think... People have gotten progressively more conscious of making their comedy inclusive. Um, it's, it's, you know, a massive topic of debate constantly, particularly with older school comedians about political correctness killing comedy. But um, I think it's more just uh, less about political correctness and more about comedians being mindful of wanting audiences to properly enjoy what they're putting out and uh, the reality is that audiences are diverse so our comedy should cater to diverse audiences and not alienate anybody so I think that's the biggest change I've seen I mean it was already certainly in effect like five and a half years ago when I started but um, it's something that has just sort of snowballed over the years and people have um, yeah become increasingly mindful of it and I think that's a great thing Oh, just get up there and have a crack at it. Um, probably the best advice is like to do things your way and not to worry too much about advice from other people, really. Everybody's sort of got their own way of how they navigated uh, getting into comedy and sort of climbing up the ladder. But do things your way. Don't worry about criticism from other people in the industry who have done it a different way. Um, 
if you're going to take advice uh, off anybody, I actually read this on Twitter the, the other day, never accept criticism of anyone you wouldn't go to for advice. And I absolutely love that. But yeah, do it your way and get up there, have fun, prepare to fail heaps and just know that your next gig's going to be better. Like you're going to be fine. Oh, just world domination. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm working on my new show now. Um, the goal eventually is to write a show that I'm happy enough with to take to Edinburgh Fringe. So whether that's next year or the year after. But uh, just to keep touring around, um, keep having fun and uh, keep getting funnier, basically. Thank you so much for listening to this and uh, thank you so much Sit Down Comedy Club for filming it for me, you absolute legends. Always love working with you guys. Um, if you want to follow what I'm up to in the future, you can catch me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Kirsty Wiebeck. That's W-E-B-E-C-K. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you at a live show soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>